Imagine this. A woman with silver hair wanders through a neon-soaked Tokyo street as cherry blossoms flutter around her in a soft digital rain. A woolly mammoth, its fur matted with snow, thunders across a vast, icy plain. A pirate ship crests a wave made not of water but of shimmering liquid gold. None of that was real. Those scenes weren't shot by a camera. They weren't crafted by a visual effects team. And they are coming for creativity as we know it. In the last few years, AI learned to write, then it learned to paint. Now with advanced models like OpenAI's Sora and Runway, it's learned to generate entire worlds from just a few words. But are these its creations or ours? We're about to find out if AI just stole creativity or if it's about to unlock it in ways we can't even imagine. Welcome back to Mentor's Mindset. Let's start with the accusation, the argument that has artists and creators watching with a mix of terror and awe. The fear is this. Artificial intelligence can now create content at a speed and scale that is simply inhuman. It's a machine trained on vast data sets of human art and now it's making its own. But is it really creating? The first charge against AI is that it's basically a high-tech copycat. These systems are trained on massive libraries of existing human-made work. Photos, paintings, films, you name it. They learn the patterns and styles we've spent centuries developing. What they produce then isn't born from inspiration or experience. It's a sophisticated remix, a collage of what's come before. AI doesn't have a soul, it has no lived experiences, and it can't draw from heartbreak or joy. It mimics, but it doesn't feel. This leads to the second charge, the death of originality. Research has shown that AI-generated ideas can be less diverse than those from humans. The models tend to drift toward common patterns, which could lead to a world of content that all feels the same. A flood of technically perfect yet soulless art that flattens the weird, jagged and beautiful edges of human expression. And then there's the economic fallout. The anxiety isn't just philosophical, it's about paying the bills. When filmmaker Tyler Perry saw what AI video generators could do, he put an $800 million expansion of his Atlanta studio on indefinite hold. He'd planned on building 12 new sound stages. After seeing what AI could whip up from a simple text prompt, he wondered if he'd even need them. His fear, shared across the industry, is that AI could wipe out the need for physical sets, location shoots, and countless jobs for crew members. One study from Goldman Sachs projected that generative AI could expose a significant portion of tasks in creative fields to automation. This isn't some far-off future, it's happening right now. Some creative workers report their jobs are already shifting from original creation to just reviewing and editing what an AI spits out, a move that devalues both their skills and their craft. And finally, there's the legal mess. How can we call this creativity when the law refuses to? The US Copyright Office has been clear. A work generated purely by an AI cannot be copyrighted because it lacks human authorship. There's no author to grant rights to. That legal stance gets at a fundamental point. AI, on its own, is seen as a process, not a creator. The situation is even murkier when you consider that these models are often trained on copyrighted materials without permission, sparking a storm of lawsuits and ethical debates about theft. The accusation is heavy. AI is a plagiarist, a job killer, a creative echo chamber, and a legal ghost. It's a tool that threatens to devalue the very heart of human artistry. This is a huge complex issue and it's changing every day. We're tracking it closely, so if you want to stay on top of how AI is rewriting our world, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I have to ask, how are you using AI in your creative work or your business? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. The conversation is just getting started. But that's only half the story. For every artist who sees a threat, there's a technologist and another artist who sees a massive opportunity. The defense of AI isn't that it's a new artist, 
but that it's a new kind of paintbrush, a tool that, far from replacing creativity, could actually expand and democratize it. The core of this argument is that AI smashes the barrier to entry. For centuries, bringing a grand vision to life required enormous resources. To make a film, you needed cameras, crews, and a Hollywood budget. To compose an orchestral piece, you needed, well, an orchestra. Now a single creator with a powerful idea can generate breathtaking videos or compose complex music right from their laptop. This isn't the death of creativity, it's the distribution of creative power to everyone. Think of AI, not as the artist, but as the ultimate assistant. A 2024 survey from Robert Half found that 40% of creative professionals said AI tools helped them work more efficiently and achieve better results. And the number one benefit, automating time-consuming and tedious tasks. Imagine an animator freed from the drudgery of tracing thousands of frames or a designer who can generate a dozen font options in seconds. By handing the grunt work to the machine, AI frees up human creators to focus on what they do best, the big ideas, the storytelling, and the emotional heart of the work. This is where you get augmented creativity. AI can be a powerful brainstorming partner. It can make unexpected connections and shatter creative blocks. An artist could ask an AI to combine the aesthetic of a butterfly with an elephant, sparking a completely new design. The AI acts as a catalyst, presenting possibilities that might have stayed hidden. This is even leading to entirely new forms of art. We're seeing robot artists like Ida create paintings and AI composition tools, helping musicians explore new sounds. This isn't replacing human art. It's expanding the definition of what art can be. The human is still the director, the curator, the visionary. The prompt is the new art form, and the quality of the output depends on the skill and intent of the person guiding the AI. The argument here is that AI isn't a replacement for human creativity. It's a tool to amplify it. The defense rests on this crucial idea. AI is a collaborator, not a competitor. It's a powerful engine, but a human still needs to be in the driver's seat, providing the destination and the soul. So who's right, the accuser or the defender? Is AI a thief or a tool? The truth, as it so often is, is somewhere in the messy middle. It's not a simple yes or no. History gives us a great parallel. When the camera was invented in the 19th century, painters panicked. They called it the death of art. Why would anyone want a painted portrait when a photograph could capture a perfect likeness in an instant? The fear was identical. A machine was about to make human skill obsolete. But it didn't. The camera didn't kill painting, it freed it. Liberated from the burden of just capturing reality, painters went on to explore Impressionism, Cubism and Abstract Expressionism. The camera became its own art form, a new tool for a new kind of artist. The fear was real, but the art world simply got bigger. We are likely in a similar moment, AI will displace some jobs and automate certain tasks. The role of the creative professional is absolutely changing, but it will also create new roles we can't imagine yet and supercharge the work of those who learn to use it. The future probably isn't human versus AI, it's human with AI. The real fight isn't about the technology itself, but how we choose to use it. The key is developing strong ethical and legal guardrails. We're already seeing this happen. The SAG-AFTRA union fought for and won agreements that established protections around consent and compensation for an actor's digital replica. And in 2024, California passed new laws to protect all performers, even non-union ones, from the unauthorized use of their digital likeness, ensuring they have control over their own image. These frameworks are crucial because they aim to keep humans at the center of the creative process. They help ensure that AI serves as a tool to support human talent, not to exploit it. So here we are at a profound crossroads. The technology is advancing at a terrifying, exhilarating pace. Models like Sora are not just lines of code, they are cultural forces, powerful enough to reshape entire industries and our very idea of what it means to create. They hold up a mirror, forcing us to ask what is truly unique about human creativity. Is it our technical skill, which a machine can now replicate? 
Or is it the intention, the emotion, the lived experience behind the art, the parts the machine can only ever pretend to have? Is AI a thief or is it a new kind of paintbrush? Does it spell the end of the artist or the birth of a new one? The future isn't written yet. The answer might just be up to us. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. See you next time.